Yeah, good afternoon. I want to do this short video as a way of um, following up on the installation of uh, Windows 7 installation. I'm just going to quickly explore the Windows 7 installation that we installed. Um, on our virtual box and see how to proceed from there, how to check our uh, the drivers to be sure they are properly installed and uh, how to do some other settings. Uh, quickly, I want to uh, share my screen. Uh, before then, let me let me launch the virtual box and then I will share my screen. Don't forget yesterday we uh, we talked about installing Windows 7. Uh, I also showed you how to uh, to install either from CD, MDVD, or from um, the ASO image. So it, it can be uh, quite uh, interesting to try the one that is available to you. So I'm just going to log in into Modu now. And I'm going to also look at the other ways you can install Windows 7. Um, it's uh, very interesting. It's very, very interesting. <clears throat> you can see yesterday we did a lot of um, things and we learned a lot of things trying to install Windows 7 on VirtualBox. Um, now I'm going to share my screen for us to see uh, why we need to to experiment. We need to experiment why uh, why we need to also i mean we need to do some final check on our installation to be sure uh, that uh, we have done the property now i'm going to quickly show you a follow-up on yesterday's uh, lab so let me share my screen now. Uh, okay. Mm, I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Okay, yes. This is a simple guide. If you still haven't gotten the, the steps yesterday, this will surely um, help you. Step-by-step so -step guide how to clean install Windows 7. That means there is no, no operating system already on the hard drive, or if there is any, you are wiping out everything by partitioning and formatting. So as to start from the scratch. So what is clean install? It's when you are wiping out the entire hard disk clean and you're starting from the scratch. So that's just it. So we've tried that yesterday. Um, we've seen that uh, you cannot actually do some things. Um, you can, if you are using Windows XP, the clean install is your only option. You cannot upgrade 
from Windows XP to Windows 7. Okay, that's very important. Now, as we sh just showed yesterday, you click install now, which we did. If you want to do, want to know more, more before installing Windows, you can look at the requisite, the things you need to check. And then want to do repair your computer, you can just click on repair. But we are actually dealing with install now. So if you want to repair computer, you will look at that uh, in a later lab. Now this is uh, preparing for Windows 7. Um, you need to check the upgrade advisor if you are using a, a previous uh, version and you want to see if you want to back up or copy your programs, um, your files in particular. And uh, because you are going to really uh, lose all the files on that hard drive when you're doing clean installation. So this is where you change the PC boot priority. And then this is where you click the next. After a couple, when it will, it will start, you will click next, and then you click install now, and then you accept the licensing terms to perform the installation. Instead of upgrade, you select custom uh, stroke adv custom advanced in bracket. And then you select your main drive, which usually disk zero partition one and then you format. But if you have a virgin hard drive to just tell you on partition, um, uh, you know, uh, space, something like that, like uh, we saw when we were installing. And then you, you need to partition, you need to form partition and then you need to format. And then when you format, you takes about, you know, 15 to 30 minutes, as we said yesterday, for your installation to complete, depending on the speed of your uh, computer system. Uh, yesterday, we, we, we took about, um, you know, 35 thereabouts. Also, uh, then you now need to set your user account, password, um, and then you, now let me quickly do a, a one in here. Now, when you, well, we, we, we advise you to, to use a very strong password. Recommended password should be a combination of character and letters. Don't use your name, don't use your pet name, don't use, uh, and then type a password hint. Now, don't go and put the exact password you type as your password hint. So you, by doing that, you have already given out the password to uh, I mean, unauthorized user to access your system. So the password hint is actually meant to help you if you forget your password. So uh, like now my mother's bath space, this word is here now. So that, that could tell you of your mother's bath space. But it could also tell you, uh, in, in, instead of saying my mother's bath, you can say a, 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 a town, okay, in, 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 in Nigeria. So the person may have to guess all the towns in in, the, in Nigeria before it can get before you can you know but you we already know that this particular time town you use for your password but I mean for the password hint no, not actually for the password sorry for the password hint so as we set up the password user account as we did yesterday I just skip it because I don't want to put password and then you select your uh, current computer location what we selected work network uh, because um, it's more, more 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 secure than public network, um, and then you get to this stage. So this is where we we landed yesterday. When, this is where we got to after we finished. Now and to try to uh, if we allowed it, it will download updates and it will also uh, finish up. So all this will apply to Windows 7 Starter, Windows 7 Home Basic, Windows 7 Home Premium, Windows 7 Enterprise, Windows 7 Professional, Windows 7 Ultimate. Now these are the different, uh, you know, versions, licensing versions you have. The Starter is, and Basics are very, very basic. Home Premium, uh, you may not be able to do much, um, but from Enterprise, Professional, you can really do Professional, um, you know, 
stuff with it. So thank you. I want to quickly now move uh, quickly to, I want to move quickly. I want to stop sharing now. I want to do a new share. I want to move to the, yes. I want to move quickly to the Windows 7. Now I want to see what we have done yesterday. I want to start it and then you watch as it starts. Uh, after the starting, then I will just quickly show you, I'll take you around the Windows 7, um, you know, environment. And from there, you'll be able to see the next thing to do. Normally, when you finish installing Windows 7, because of our time yesterday, we could not go further. The first place to check is your device manager. You look at what uh, needs to be done, okay? It's starting with the, yes. We're not going to press it from CD or DVD, we're putting from the hard drive, from our virtual, you know, image disk, which is the, which is the um, virtual bus uh, uh, disk, I mean, image uh, drive. Now, uh, we know it's starting now. Um, I may need to also position my, I may need to, I may need to do a new share to, to pick this, yes, so that you can see it properly. Um, because we'll be looking at a few things here um, before I round up. Um, I'll make sure it's, um, it's, it's not going to, to be a long video. It's just to tell you what to do after you finish installing Windows 7. Uh, you've set your user account and then you need to just analyze some things. You need to check, um, you know, check the device manager, check the my computer properties and be sure that all the drivers are properly installed. Okay, now here we go. This is uh, Windows 7 Professional um, trying to It's trying to um, boot. This is what we call booting. Uh, it's trying to boot to the desktop. When it gets to the desktop, then we can do a few things, uh, trying to check what and what is happening. Uh, I may need to, okay, it's, it's here now, so I don't want to pause now. Now, quickly, I'm going to look at my computer. I'm gonna look at my computer. Okay. I'm going to look at yeah, my computer. You can see 32 gig that we do here. Now I'm going to right click on computer. I'm gonna click on properties where we stopped yesterday. Yes, let me bring it down. Okay, uh, you can see we need to, as I said yesterday, we need to to actually uh, activate the windows. So, but where I'm going now is to check where, where I want to look at is the control panel, and then we'll look at the device manager. Uh, later, we'll look at other things like the advanced system setting and all that. We're going to also look at uh, maybe virtual memory setting or this Okay, you can see this is the device manager. This is uh, devices are here. Uh, this is the computer. It's a SCPI 64 base PC. They are, we actually install 64 bit on the 64 uh, 64 bit operating system, Windows 7 on 64 bit machine. So then you look at the adapter. Uh, you see the um, DVD, so you can see it puts VBOX, virtual box CD-ROM. So this is a driver that is using to access the physical drive on the laptop. Okay, then also look at it. Uh, 
is using the USB input device. That means the, the mouse or the touchpad we're using. Then look at the ID uh, is taking this from the system. These are the advanced technology um, attachment programmable uh, interface or some call it, um, you know, packet interface. Now you can see this has channel zero, channel one, which so that is if you are using a TAPI controllers, uh, ID drives, this is actually for the a hard drive, the, the controller for the hard drives. And then you talk about the, for the SATA, Syria ATA, Advanced Technology at, uh, Attachment, uh, that is for the SATA drive. So and SATA drives are very efficient, faster, and uh, they are more readily available now. So I think uh, that's what we normally use now. Uh, you see the keyboard, you see all these things. Now, something to look for something to watch out for is that when you see, can you see the network adapter is using the actually the one that is, you know, the one that is, let me expand it. The one that is, um, that is, um, that is on the, the physical machine that is on the physical laptop. So it's just taking a, taking a, a, a kind of, uh, a stance of it taking it just uh you know it's, it's it's using a kind of virtual a uh, copy of it okay now look at this anywhere you see exclamation mark or question mark it means that drive i mean that particular device needs to be checked either the driver needs to be updated or the driver is not installed at all and so and when, I, when you double click on it, you will see that all of these devices are not installed, code 28. Then you may need to check uh, and update the driver through the internet, okay? Uh, or you may need to do what we, will, we can use a driver update on the net to, to know which, uh, which device it is so that you can actually get the updated um, driver, you can see. So you can look at driver details and then you can see update driver. This can check for the driver software to update. And details, you can see resources, nothing, because the, the device no. So when you, so this will also uh, help us to know the system resources that the, the device is using. For instance, if I double click on the, on the uh, adapter for the network adapter, the adapter for the network, you see, it's saying this device is working properly. That means the, 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 the driver is properly installed. And so you can see advanced, you can see the driver um, version, you can see the details, and you can see the resources. Okay, you can see same resources we talk about memory, IO range, IRQ. So it's using IRQ, uh, you know, 19 here, uh, which, you know, and then, and then it's using I, IO range you know, input output range like that. So when a device is properly installed, there will be resources uh, allocated to it. It will have resource settings like memory range, I, uh, IO addresses, that means input output addresses, and then in, in then interrupt requests, IRQ. Uh, in, our, in our hardware class in the first semester, uh, we talked about the system resources, uh, IRQ, being used by the <clears throat> by the uh, devices to interrupt the CPU, and then we also talk about IO addresses that the CPU uses to communicate with a particular device. So take note of that. Um, this are still very very uh, valid here. So power management, this can show whether the, this shows whether the computer can turn off the device to save power. So that is that. So now I'm quickly going to stop here uh, because um, there's only one device that needs to be updated. And uh, you can see the processor of this is this. This is where you get to know most of the devices. Uh, later, we'll do other 
uh, labs to actually follow up on this. Now, let me close this and uh, let me uh, quickly look at advanced system setting. Yes, this is where we see your computer name, where you compute your, your hardware. This, you can also get the vast manager from here, advanced. Now, this is where we look at our, um, you know, uh, we have performance here, yes, where we can have virtual effects, processor scheduling, memory usage, and virtual memory. Now, this is where we actually set virtual memory, okay? Uh, but we, we, we normally allow Windows to choose the best for the computer. So, well, we don't normally touch anything about, for here, you see virtual memory is a paging file in the, uh, uh, that is in an area of the hard drive that Windows uses as if it were around, okay? So that's a virtual memory, okay? The total paging file for all drive is two gig, okay? You can change it. So you have the physical RAM, which is what is on the, is on the hardware. Now, this virtual memory is to complement the, the, the physical RAM. Now we have two gig for the virtual memory and we have two gig for the physical memory. So that means this system can, you know, make use of this four gig, you know, this is going to be an area on the hard drive that Windows will be using as if it were around. So it will create temporary files there, which it will uh, use in any process. Uh, I mean, and then those files after the processing is done can be deleted. So that's why you can do uh, disk cleanup regularly because those files can be left there after they have been, you know, uh, used, uh, after they are done with. So those files become useless and they can be gotten rid of, they can be deleted. Uh, but you can use this cleanup to do that or to free more space. So which we are gonna do later. So thank you very much for this uh, short video I've just done. This is data exclusion pre prevention is a bit advanced. So um, we're going to stop here for now. Um, I'm going to cancel. Now the next thing that you may want to look at, let me see, is uh, you want to check all the programs. Okay, these are all the programs we have here. Um, you know, uh, accessory on the accessory. Uh, you can use the command prompt. They're going to be this command command prompt. Uh, probably we'll do this more on Windows 7 before we install Windows uh, 10. So Windows 7, we'll be using some commands to correct problems. Uh, we're going to introduce us to commands, you know, because we need to know command prompts and we need to know how to use commands to solve problems. So that we'll probably do uh, when we move into, um, um, you know, using commands to solve problems. Uh, you can connect to projector, you can do notepad, paint, all these things are here. Now there's something into the system tools, very, very important, easy of access, but let's look at system tools that you may need to get acquainted with. One of them is disk cleanup, disk documenter, control panel, computer, all these things, resource monitor, system information. Now very, very important. Let me quickly do this system information before I go. Uh, we will we, we, we'll still do system restore and all these things, and we will do that later. But quickly, let me go we'll just use give system information. Now, very, very important. You can see, you can have a quick um, idea of the, 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 um, the, you know, the um, configuration of your system, uh, both software and hardware. So this is just a quick, you know, and you can see where we talk about physical memory, two gig, available physical memory is 1.5, then total virtual memory is four gig, available is this. Now you can see this are the, the, uh, the page file space. This is what is adding to, to the physical world. So you can see, uh, this is where uh, we talk about the conflicting devices, we call the direct memory access controller, 
this is the input output input output addresses this is uh, these are the uh, uh, interrupt requests you know uh, on the system and uh, memory you know range and you can look at the components here and you can get to know also the software environment these are the ones you can see here so thank you very much i'm going to stop here um if have any question we will take care of that have a nice day see you again bye Okay, bye for now.